Does it work? Hey! <laughs> hey! Awesome. Well, that worked out well. Look at you and your cute little hat. Thanks. Love it. How are you? Good. Um, not too bad. Just trying to get this one thing in for work. <laughs> for work? Yeah. Yeah. I I'm bet it's crazy. I'm like sweating. Right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, we're like super excited to have you on today. Um, this yeah. is our first uh, live at five on Instagram. Um, and so we have been trying to stay in the loop with our players, just doing different things. Um, we've yeah. been doing some like teaching moments and stuff like that. And um, just trying to give them ways to learn more about volleyball, um, you know, when they can't be on the court. Um, and so we definitely wanted to talk to you and just um, <laughs> let our players hear from you about some different things that you've gone through in your career. Um, and so if anyone didn't know, Ashley was actually a Skyline legend. Um, <laughs> She played volleyball at Skyline for quite some time and from the very beginning when Skyline started. Um, and so this is our 10 year anniversary. Whoop. Yes. Um, this is crazy. Oh yeah, gosh. isn't it? Um, so what was Skyline like when you first came along? What did you like about it? Oh gosh. Oh, I loved Skyline. I just love the competitiveness of it, I guess. But we did, we moved, I think, twice, like locations at least. But um, just of like, because I went and played at Techstar. I don't know if anyone knows where Techstar is in a little small town called Weimar. That's where I played first when I was in club, when first starting. And so I think I moved to Skyline when I was like 14, 14s. And so just the competitive level and like everyone's commitment was just like so awesome, so different. And then um, my first coach, um, she was just awesome. She she was a bit tough more than I was used to, but I, I love that aspect of things. And then um, slowly with Jen and Mitch, they slowly got us to do like conditioning, which I thought was really cool and was very helpful in preparing ourselves for college and then the next level of things. So um, I would say that when first starting, um, I was a bit like, I guess overwhelmed just because I get to travel now. I didn't get to travel yeah. when I was at um, my first club. And so that was that was pretty fun, just the experience with that. And obviously, when you do college, um, you get to travel a lot, which is really fun. Um, so I would say like that, mainly probably like traveling, um, getting used to like being on the road. Um, I know everyone has like homework and things and a social life. And yeah. I know when we're younger, we always want to be with people all the time. And like we're missing out on things. But I can tell everyone that it is so worth it so worth just like going and like being committed to like a sport that you love because in college and things like past being in like junior high and stuff there's way more things that you could do with a skill that you pretty much love to do all the time so putting yeah. that dedication is definitely a big thing yeah so what do you feel like uh, were some of your biggest takeaways from club volleyball? Like what helped you get ready to play at the next level? Um, I would have to say probably like a commitment or dedication of more of like putting in the work. Every like not saying that club, not everyone wants to, a spot, but you kind of, you need to like have that commitment. Like I'm doing this in full, yeah. like nothing's going to stop me. I'm going to put in my extra work, extra time because that just like every little rep does matter. And so um, I would have to say that with club, just because you always, everyone wants to play and you always want to stand out in some way. And so um, just kind of getting, I worked with Jen and I also did um, some extra stuff with setting. I know I was a libero. So back then, I guess back then, I don't even know, <laughs> but um, not, not a lot of people set. So I think that was like one cool feature of mine, I would say with like a lot of college people is that I could set from the back row. And um, so I actually went in, I don't know if I started that, but I just went in to the 30 minutes that setters training. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so just like putting that extra time and just finding like different space and different like things to do just to make your skill better. Um, I think that's what helped me from club. Um, it's just trying to get with people like other coaches and like learning from them. And, yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, maybe you started the DS liberos coming to setter training because now they all come every time. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like some people hate me about that, but <laughs> I mean, they love it. it. It really is a difference maker being able to set as a libero. No, yeah. This is the way the game has moved. No, yeah. I don't know about other people, but I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be like as a true setter. I would not be a good setter. <laughs> but from a libero standpoint, I absolutely loved setting. Like yeah. I thought I was so cool, and like I don't know, it's just the aspect of like you can literally do like whatever you want. Like you can't, and so it's just a different skill that you can do. And so I just thought that was always like a fun, fun little thing. And um, yeah, I just worked really hard on it. <laughs> yeah. So going into kind of moving into college years so tell us about your opportunity at Kentucky kind of like how did that come about um what did you really like about them and what made you really want to go there yeah I, well I always we get that question a lot or I do um I mean anywhere you go but it's really crazy I didn't want to go out of state like it's kind of funny. It's this kind of sounds like weird, but it's like when you think like Kentucky, I didn't even think was a state. You know, it's like something you don't really ever talk about. Like I don't talk <laughs> yeah. about Kentucky all the time, or like Ohio and stuff. So um, I don't know. I they actually I was at um, UTSA. I think one a tournament over there at UTSA football stadium, and Anders Nelson. He actually coached at Arkansas at the okay. time, and he we we're playing TAV, and everyone knows like TAV is a big big club and so um and he actually stopped by our, our court and saw me play and um he I guess I did something really good that he liked me and so then he actually he actually moved to Kentucky and okay. mentioned me to Greg Skinner the head coach and so I guess that's how I got into the pipeline with Kentucky and Kentucky's big on their liberos um they've had SEC libero the years for some time and so um so that's how I got into the pipeline so and what I really liked about Craig and all of them is that they would actually come, they actually came to Texas and like watch a Skyline practice of mine, which I thought was really cool, showing initiative that they want me. And then for two, obviously they have like really good liberos. So my positions obviously like they take note into like what my position is. Cause sometimes liberos aren't always seen cause we're not making the points, but um, yeah. they made it seem like it's a hu huge deal to their program, which was awesome. And so um, I got there, um, big horse country. So I'm big about the country and um, a lot of land and things like that. So that's what I liked about the atmosphere. The girls would come up and hug me, act like a big family. So that was always fun. And um, so I was always kind of thinking about it. I had, did had some Texas schools um, contact me, but it just wasn't the same. Um, it's just, it's really weird because when you go on, when you go on um, visits and stuff, like there's like, there's like literally like one square. Oh wow. Like it actually feels like home to me. And so that's what Kentucky felt like to me was a second home. I felt like I could be taken care of. Um, everyone seemed super nice. The area was cool. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically why, why I picked it, but just my journey there, how I got into the pipeline was just so strange. You never know what will happen. So I always yeah. um, never know who's watching for real because mm -hmm. someone, Honors Nelson was at Arkansas at the time and then moved to Kentucky because, and you know, like in college, like coaching, you move a lot, move around a lot. So you never know who's going to move or who's watching you. So um, you always want to, yeah. For sure. Yeah. So tell us about, um, actually, side note to all of our viewers, if y'all <laughs> have questions or anything for Ashley, feel free to ask and we will um, ask those questions in front of all y'all but if not we have some kind of prepared for her um that we thought would be interesting to hear um so kind of i see courtney's way. on yeah courtney <laughs> hey courtney <laughs> i don't know can you scroll through? oh yeah you can oh my gosh jay money he's our yeah. big, he's a big uk fan big uk fan. oh that's <laughs> awesome so yeah, uh fun fact ashley and courtney played on a team together for most of the years at skyline courtney akin road who's on our staff um, and Courtney says hi. <laughs> oh, okay. He can hi. See at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of segueing oh, into oh, your uh, career at Kentucky. What do you feel like freshman year the biggest adjustment was for you? 
uh, whether that's volleyball or school wise? Um, biggest adjustment. Hmm. I would have to say, I mean, when you go to college, a lot, you have to do a lot more conditioning, a lot more waking up early. Um, so I, and then a lot more traveling, obviously, like you're traveling during the, during the week. So that messes up with like your school time. So I think just like kind of like handling that way. And then also like our resources, we have, we have, um, required study hall hours. And so that takes into play. So it's just a lot of like hours that you can kind of piece together and make sure you get everything done. So that would probably be the biggest thing from going like to club in high school to college yep. uh, as far as like academics wise, but for volleyball, like you do a lot of conditioning. So like, that's a big, like you're, you're constantly lifting weights. And so like, you're obviously gaining weight, which is good, <laughs> but yeah, it's just like, you're going to be sore a lot and just trying to stay mentally and physically healthy. Um, so from a physical side, like volleyball standards is, is that, and then it's really cool. Cause you get to practice every day for three hours in the middle of the day, which is rare. So that's always different too. Um, just kind of going from class to class and making sure you're getting everything taken care of before those practice times. But, um, yeah, it's always fun to have practice in the middle of the day. I thought so. Yeah. So you kind of brought up practicing every day for three hours how did you stay focused did you have any like mental keys did you go in early like how did that work for you that's a cool question that's a question um i always went in early um anytime i could start i would try starting yeah i would always i i don't know you can really we could have gone in any time but um we had a libero before us she started going in, she started this trend of going in early like 30 minutes early and she would always pass do like doesn't matter how many balls or anything we just go in a pass so I kind of uh, wanted to continue that and so every at least nine minutes before um I would go in and start passing or have someone serve to me so I can pass um so that way I was like mentally and like physically prepared I was already warm ready to go um kind of had my mindset of like how the ball feels in my arms and things like that so um that's what kind of what I did to prepare before practice. Um, fortunately, I wasn't an injured person. <laughs> so sometimes people had to go in and, like, get treatment done. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I didn't have to do that very often. So, um, yeah, I would just hop in. If anything, I could do it an hour before. Um, I don't know. I just like being in the gym and um, having the coaches just come and talk to me and just kind of just, like, messing around for a little bit because obviously you want to get kind of in the zone. So it's always good if, like – if you're one to be silly, I like to be silly sometimes. And so I like to kind of get that done beforehand and kind of just like mess around and do whatever I want. And then it kind of gets, kind of get in the zone and be serious once practice starts comes. So for sure. Yeah. yeah. So we have a question. So Jay Money asked, Ashley, how you been? What advice would you give to any upcoming uh, University of Kentucky student athletes, especially volleyball? Hey, Jay Money, I hope you're doing well during this crazy time. Um, what advice would I give to any upcoming UK student athlete? Um, I would say, I mean, everyone always says enjoy the moment, which I don't know, it's kind of cliche at this point. But um, it goes it really by fast. Really is. It, really do, it really does. It's just crazy. Um, I guess just, I, I guess another thing would be like knowing your priorities, like, I mean, in college, everyone's the college experience and this and that, but like truly know what like you're there for um, would probably be one. I mean, I don't want to be a sound like a stickler or party pooper or anything, but it truly is like, like being outside of college now and like knowing what I'm doing now. Like, I don't know. I just wish like sometimes being more focused and understanding like not going to parties and stuff like really matters just kind of being prepared and like knowing your purpose of like why why you're there and what's your what you're supposed to be doing so um i kind of just know that knowing your purpose of why you're there yeah for sure i uh, hope that answers your question jay money <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome thanks for the question um so oh i have another one so what was your favorite volleyball moment at kentucky Oh gosh, I remember. <laughs> um, I would have to say, I mean, 
I'm really bad about moments. Like I'm really bad at remembering things, but I know there's <laughs> such good moments like all the time. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. biggest one, I was actually scrolling through my Snapchat and um, I noticed a moment when we played Florida in October, I think it was my senior year. I think it's 2017. I believe that would be my senior year. We went to Florida and played at Florida and Florida was ranked number one at that point. Um, and so we beat them in four. I feel like Let's we should be on three. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we should have beat them in three, which is fine, but we beat them in four and it was just crazy. Like we were all just like clicking in sync. Um, everyone was in on the same page. Um, I think that's when they started like the new floor where they had the projection on the new floor. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 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 And so, uh, I'd probably say that. And then like afterwards when we won, it was just, it was just so fun. Like the coaches were all ha- were like all going nuts and yeah. we we're just all having a good time I'm in the locker sure. room. So, um, I probably have to say that just saying that we'd be a number one team in Florida is just always, always good. So, um, I yeah. probably have to say that's my, one of my favorites. Memories. Yeah, I mean, the Florida-Kentucky matches are always crazy good to watch. Um, and it's definitely fun to see both teams get after it, really. Oh, no, yeah. Well, um, SEC is doing, like, a lot better now, which is awesome. So, yeah, it's been fun to watch everyone kind of develop, which is really cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, this is an interesting one. So, what was your bread and butter as a player? So, like, what skill in volleyball – was just really easy for you or you just kind of could do without thinking about it and it just gave you a lot of confidence in yourself um I mean I would say like passing but passing passing can be like an up and down type thing but um I I would probably say setting from the back row I mean I, I always knew where the ball was going and like um felt good every time I set yeah. So, and I, and that was like the time I was like, dang, this is my time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> now I can, I can do this. And so I probably have to say setting, um, just cause I have so much fun with it. And, um, I don't know. I'm just like really confident in it just because I feel like I'm one on one very few liberos that can set from the back row. So I think that kind of gives you like a little more confidence booster. Um, so I'd probably have to say setting was my yeah which is really surprising (laughs) yeah i mean it's unique it's fun to hear that um so you talked about passing being kind of up and down did you have any like server serve receive routines or anything like that would you say anything in your head before uh you would pass it's funny because i took this one from jen oh really that's awesome yes (laughs) jen told me when she was in college she would like go like this to the server okay and I remember her telling me that she told me that um I don't even know how old I was but yeah I took that from Jen actually and so I did that all throughout my club and college careers and like I would like look over to like whoever was telling the numbers of where to serve and that would kind of give me a little hint of where we're going but um I'd probably say that I would always just like yeah come on bring it to me like yeah like I can do this and so um I kind of took that from Jen honestly so that's awesome <laughs> Side note. yeah I don't know if she remembers that but <laughs> I'm sure she does I bet she does that's awesome but just kind of giving yourself that confidence oh, yeah. um so you we posted a video earlier today of you making some pretty freakish defensive oh. plays <laughs> so was there anything that helped you like did you do any like hip flexibility work like were you just oh, gosh, I was athletic <laughs> I was poor at stretching. Y'all can ask my trainer, Katie. Poole. Don't tell our kids that, Ashley. Tell them to oh, stretch. <laughs> no, you always want to stretch. No, you really do, though. But um, I think I was always, like, always flexible. I mean, I did cheerleading um, most of my high school and junior high. But, so do you um, feel like that helped you? Yeah, I feel so. Like, and Well, I went for a small town, so, like, I always played all kinds of sports. Like, you're kind of required to play all sports. Hello. We're losing ya. Losing connection with her, but I see your questions. See if we can re ask her back in. Let's see. 
he She said she's coming back soon, so y'all stay tuned, guys. We're going to go off and come back on, guys. Oh, never mind. Found her. She's coming back on very shortly. Sorry, oh, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Thanks Sorry. for staying tuned, guys. So we yeah, got a question. You. We okay. got a question while you were gone. Um, Courtney asked, um, Ash, what do you miss most about playing? Oh, gosh, everything. <laughs> Um, I miss being, I guess, feeling athletic. I miss, um, I miss the competitiveness. Um, but the biggest thing I probably say is, gosh, I guess just playing. Like, playing against tough people. Right now, it's like, I'm trying to get with different, like, intramural things. Like, out, like, as Austin, actually, a lot of people play, like, sand and hard court. So I'm trying to get like involved with that, try to stay cool. within the sport. And so it's just hard to find really competitive and people just on the same page. So I probably just say that is what I miss the most is people kind of be in sync with you and have like had the same experiences and like understand the, the level that you're at. I would probably say it was that. Yeah. That so we kind of touched on a lot of your accolades in our post, but three-time SEC Libero of the Year, three-time oh. All-American. Were there any awards or accolades that you got that were, like, that stood out as the most special to you? Um, one would be I got um, – I mean, I'm always grateful for, like, all – like, no awards should – like, we would always say as a team, like – the, any award is a team award. And so, yeah, I may get it individually, but there's really nothing more than I, I actually, like, I, I can't get a dig without a block. I can't do, can't do this and that. So it's very much a team effort. But um, one, I did get, I think I got one week. They always do those weekly um, defensive players of the week and things. Mm -hmm. And I think the one I got was like the player of the week which yeah. is like, very rare for a libero, I would say. So I felt very honored to get that just because mm -hmm. I, I was a libero um, and that was very rare. And so I felt very special at that time and very honored. So um, I'd probably say that for, I think it was like my, maybe like my junior year or something, I got that. But um, yeah, that one's very rare for a libero. So I felt very honored to have that one. Yeah. Which is, it's like a small award, but like any award is like an awesome award to me, so. For sure. Yeah, we got another question. What tips do you have for left back defense? Um, for left back defense, I would say um, just make sure you're staying outside your block. Um, trust your block. Um, they're there for a reason. Um, and so, um, and I mean, I'd always, I was, I would have to say I was pretty good at reading, reading hit hitters and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so when I got to college and probably later on in my club years. Um, I had to make sure to stay outside that block and trust them because they're there for a reason. So um, I always have to say that and kind of give um, any, any information you can to the block. Um, they're your main asset in that point. Um, so yeah, I have to say that. Yeah, we got another one from, this one's from Jen. She's asking, what is your favorite Skyline memory? Oh gosh, Jen, that was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my sc favorite skyline memory. Gosh, you got me off guard. Um, gosh, I would have honestly like all of them are my favorite memories. Like, it's just crazy. Um, I can't remember the teams, but um, oh, 
I honestly couldn't give you an exact memory, but um, I love you all. I love everyone. Mm -hmm. Skyline, um, it's truly like a family, you guys. And I hope everyone's enjoying it as much as I did. Um, everything is just so like high tech now compared to what I was used to. Um, so everyone, that's very, I'm sure everyone's very grateful for that. But um, sorry, Jen, I don't have a specific one. <laughs> but, but, but being coached by you is always like the greatest, so. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, let me see. We just got another one. Um, do you have any recruiting advice? Um, like to be recruited, I guess. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just kind of going outside your comfort zone. My dad always made me go up. I mean, I don't, I know now, but my dad always made me go up to coaches and like introduce myself. Um, it doesn't hurt to do that. I know at some points like they can't talk to you or anything, yeah. but if you initiate the conversation and kind of just show um, a face to a name, um, I'd probably just say that and maybe just email them, um, email them as much as possible, kind of give them an update on what you're doing um, mm -hmm. because repetition is always key in anything. Um, so I'd probably just say that is constantly reminding them of who you are, what you look like, um, and then what your goals in life i guess so for sure yeah let's see we got another one <laughs> this person said whose power clean looks better ash or nick that sounds for like that's our strength coach <laughs> which he's awesome too i don't nick know nick is ash. ashley's husband nick is yes. ashley's husband everybody <laughs> yes um, um nick actually threw shot put at kentucky so um big dude but um i don't know i mean obviously i tried to say nick but <laughs> at this point yes nick because i swear like i'm sorry i need to get into it i've been watching your videos but um i need to get back into it but um i don't know i i like the power the power clean but um i think for i can say i i wasn't the strongest but i did try my hardest i try, was a hard worker but um, good <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, someone asked how tall you are. I'm five seven and a half. <laughs> good, good. And then, what tips do you have for reading hitters? Um, watching the elbow and the hand. Um, when the elbow drops, you know they're probably about to tip. Um, and just body language. Um, if they're off, they're in. Um. If they're inside, they're most likely probably going to tip or go sharp cross and things like that. Um, just knowing where they're at um, on the court, I would have to say, in the in the shoulder or the elbow. Cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, are there any intangibles that you brought to the court that you think are super important to the game of volleyball? Um, intangibles. Remind me of that. What it is. <laughs> So tangible something would be like if you give a good pass. Intangible is like, do I communicate a lot? Um, okay. Am I encourage Sorry, my I'm, I'm kind of blonde sometimes. <laughs> but um, no, I'd always like. Oh, I'm so sorry. I keep looking. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, we always um, told that like if you the more you touch, it's really weird. The more you like high five or touch someone, the more like. <laughs> and like understanding you are of them so i would constantly give like high fives or um kind of just talk talk through things with people um so i'd just say like communication just like being happy everyone i people i talk to you just say like i'm always happy on the court which um i there i did have um kaz brown she was a middle blocker for us middle hitter her and i bounced out the court and the team very well because she was very like on you about stuff and I was very like um I guess like more of the happy side like making sure it's okay but it's always good to have that balance so I'd probably have to say um just being happy and just like keeping smiles on people's faces because all the time people are looking the bad in things um you're always remembering the bad and what you did wrong um and so yeah yeah that's awesome. Was there anyone that you really connected with on the court? Like you loved playing with that person? Um, I love playing with them all. Um, 
I'd probably just say Cass. I mean, I loved all, I loved everyone. Like, it's, it's, there's no way to like really tell individuals, yeah. but like Cass just always had a fire to her. Mm -hmm. um, she always like wanted the best for the team and like things like that. And, um, but I, I, even my whole senior group, everyone, we were just all in, it was like awesome. Yeah. Like we constantly had meetings together, like, Hey, what can we do better? Um, how can we relay this to like the younger players that may not understand? And so, um, but Kaz always had a fire and it was just, it was just awesome. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. So how did you not get in your head when you would make mistakes? Um, I would just think about the next ball, like the next play. That one's already passed. Um, and so I would just kind of think of the next, um, next thing, like, okay, now I'm being served. I'm not, I'm not on defense anymore. I'm passing. Mm -hmm. So now I just need to focus on this one pass. All I need to figure out is how to get the ball to this area. And so kind of just like that, um, there's, there was times where I was getting my head so much or something, but I would always go talk to a coach that I was very comfortable with, kind of tell them what's going on. Um, or even I had Mackenzie Watson and um, Trey Barnes. Uh, Mackenzie was a DS, Sheree was a right side for us. And they could tell when I was jittery or like not in the zone. And so uh, me and Mackenzie always would talk to each other and say like we'd always make a joke and say you suck like you need to stop like you suck and so that was kind of <laughs> always be like a trigger for us like saying okay like I need to get out of my own head like this is like we just need to have fun right now so that's just like yeah. kind of just finding that person or that word that kind of like gets you back into the zone yeah some sort of joke that gets you out of your head <laughs> yeah which is really weird like I don't know sometimes people don't want to be oh like I don't need to be joking around right now but like you, you need to have that, like, life can't always be, like, too serious, so, um, you, sh like, you should know, like, when to be serious, when to, like, you need to, like, kind of trigger out of it, so, um, yeah, that's, like, I'd heard say, like, Mackenzie or Sheree, that one of the two would always come up to me and kind of tell me to get on my own head. Cool, yeah, um, let's see, we have one yeah. more question, oh, well, we kind of touched on that one, so I won't get that one, but... <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I have another one. Um, okay. So you were a volunteer assistant at AM for a year. Um, mm -hmm. What did you learn as a coach that you feel like you didn't know very well as a player? Gosh, I was thinking about that question. I would have to say knowing other positions other than libero. Because okay. <laughs> <laughs> all the time, I mean, when I was playing in, at Techstar, my very first club ever, um, I, I was a setter and an outside, and then I got moved probably when I was, probably when I was like a year out. Um, the club director said I should be a libero, so I've always done libero, everything. Mm -hmm. And so I've always always studied that. I've always known that. And so that was probably a huge transition to me because, like, I would always tell the outsides and things, like, what I'm seeing as a libero standpoint, but, like, how it – would I ever tell them what to do for their own position? So like, I think that was like something very different for me to know is like how to coach an outside with like their steps or their arm mm -hmm. and then how to tell them how to block, which everyone, like I know the basics of blocking, but there's very much like technical work that's like very, very small things to make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And so I'd probably have to say that is like knowing others positions and like how to coach that I did work with Wendell he's at a and still now and I tried studying and like sh I guess shadowing him on how to coach a setter because like I was always a background like I'll, I just like went up there and just did my thing and for me I could just set five on five off like I didn't have to set in a, a specific yep. area I guess so that was like the hardest thing is like footwork and like where their hips are being placed um so I'd probably say it was that, was just knowing the different positions and, like, the very technical work that goes into those positions. Cool. And it's always good to know from even, like, a libero to always study that because you never know what position you're in. <laughs> you never know if someone will get injured and you're going to have to play outside. So, <laughs> That's I think, fair. That's that. I think you had to do that one time. Not in college. I, not in college, no. no. I thought in club we did at one point. I think you did at one point. You had to play. Uh, I know I did. At you one had to play point. outside. I remember. 
I think, <laughs> I think, um, I've seen a quite one or two times in college where a DS had to be in the front row. Yeah. So I mean, that happens. happens. You run out of subs. Yeah. For no, sure. yeah, for sure. But, um, um but yeah, just let's knowing. see. We have another one. Uh, where was the hardest place to play in the SEC? Oh, gosh. Um, Courtney's going to hate me, but I'm probably going to say Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> what well, about I Missouri? Say, I would have to say their, their old gym in Missouri, like the okay. one that had the yellow lighting. Um, and so it's just really hard to see the ball. Um, but Missouri in general was cool. But just the gym, that gym was just a little harder to see the ball and to, like, get in rhythm which I think was an advantage to all Missouri. But, yeah. um, no, I always love going to see Courtney and I'm um, even Kelly at LSU. It's yeah. always fun to have people in your conference. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What do you think the hardest part about passing is? Oh gosh, the mental, mental part of it. Um, I mean, when you're hitting, you get, you can make points. And so that kind of like, Oh yeah. Like I made a point for our team, like kind of like, I don't know, your mind's kind of thinking something else. But as a DS, like, you get a good dig. That's always a good point. But um, I was just say, say mentally focused. Like, even when service D was always, like, something I I wouldn't say struggled with, but, like, you're constantly getting balls after you. Like, the coach wants you to get out of seat because once you're out of seat, you're supposed to be yep. the back rows, like, mm -hmm. captain. And so um, I would just say that mental focus would probably be the hardest thing is – not getting in your own head. Um, physically, you can always come back to it, but mentally, your brain's crazy when it comes to that, like, thinking yeah. about So. Did you ever find it hard? Like, sometimes coaches will not serve out the libero, like, the whole match and then go to you at the end. How did you keep yourself focused to be able to um, execute? I would always, I would always act like they're going to serve to me. Um, no matter what, or if I knew they weren't serving to me, I would shift our back row to where I felt like I was taking up most of the court so I can make the other person feel comfortable. Yeah. And so that kind of, so when I, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I have this much more court to cover. I'm going to have to stay focused un until, unless they serve to me. Um, so just that way, I'm always, always prepared. Like, never know, like people try to sneak in, like telling different I've had people tell different numbers um, because I'd always watch them tell different numbers <laughs> and then they'd say, hey, it's the opposite of this number. And so, um, yeah, you'll ne you never know. So, like, always just being prepared and act like it's come to you um, and put set yourself up to the best position that you can. For sure. Okay, we'll take a couple more questions here. Let's see. Do you have any tips on jump surfing? Um, getting to your highest point um and extending out your arm i would say um i really weird you would think like serving would be the easiest thing but i struggled so much with serving because serving actually is like a huge part in college because that's like the first like you can get a free free point just from serving well and so um i would say just kind of getting at the top of your jump and it doesn't always matter about power it matters about how your how it floats um how much top spin you're putting on it um and so um, it's not always about power, honestly. Sometimes for like a top spin jump serve, I would say power is key. But for a float server, as much float you can put on there um, and just being at your highest jump, you want to try to get as high as you can Yeah. Uh, to be over on top of the net. So Cool. We'll take one last question from Jen. What advice do you have for high school players preparing to transition to college ball? Um, one thing to prepare. That's a good question, Jen. Um, <laughs> I, um I would just say, uh, like while you're in high school, how to prepare. Um, I would just say, probably get with the strength coach. Um, what and then even like the head coach, what things could you possibly do to prepare yourself that you may not be doing in club or in high school that they do in the gym that you can kind of get started on and kind of get that routine going. Um, and so what I did is with strength co strength conditioning, I um, I asked them kind of the program, and they would have online videos, and so I would just search that. So that's kind of how I got 
to know um, the Olympic lifts, how that, that looks and how that feels on my body. And then um, I just would talk to the head coach and Craig and them as much as I could yeah. to figure out what they do on a daily um, or even in the summer. If you're not, if you're not going until August, I didn't go, I didn't go to, to Kentucky until August. So I didn't, I didn't spend any summer with them. Um, and so that's one thing I wish I did too, was I wish I went to Kentucky in the summer to work out with them in the summer workout. Um, so if you have the opportunity, I would highly recommend it. I did, I did not go in the summer because I wanted to be with family and stuff, which is totally understandable. Like I enjoyed that too. But, um, but yeah, I had a lot of catching up to do once I got there in August. Um, but yeah, just kind of just reaching out to the coaches and, um, like, like even a recruiting, like try to put a name to a face, talk to them as much as possible, let them know your personality, let them know who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, things like that. Yeah. Um, well, that was our last question. Um, thanks so much for doing this with us, Ashley. I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, this is fun. I like this. Yeah, it was super fun. And um, we're really glad to have you and love having you as a Houston Skyline alumni. Yeah. Um, and we just hope that you and Nick keep doing well. And hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Yeah, anytime, y'all. Let me know I'm on. <laughs> Bye, Ash. Bye, you guys. Bye.